Hey, everyone, what's up up there? Oh, Hollywood a little mad right now. Little mad. Hey, you know what? I usually don't like talking about this type of stuff. Yeah, I will profess my belief and all that stuff. Not embarrassed about doing that. But one thing that pisses me off, and boy does it piss me off sometimes, is when people throw stuff on the comment section, they get all butthurt. Now, yesterday's segment, I made a little joke. You know, the treat came down, it, there was a lightning strike, it's all taken care of. But, you know, I made a quip about I was so high that I was, I, you know, I was floating up and I was higher than God. And he said, come on back down there, something like that. Anyway, so I get a couple replies from the Bible thumpers. They all butt hurt, man. They're all butt hurt. And I'm sitting back here and thinking, dude, it was a joke. Calm down. Don't get your panties in the bind. Okay? I know you, I pissed on your Wheaties, but Jesus Christ. Ooh, damn, they're going to nail me on that one, too. So I wrote back. And I was like, you know what? It's pricks like you that drive people away from Christianity because they think they're better than everybody else. I'm sitting here th thinking, well, damn, man, God has a you know a sense of humor, man. Look at all the good comedians he made, like Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, Red Fox. You know, you hit Red Fox at the end of my thing. He's a funny guy. But they make it into such a big deal. And they wonder why bikers, most bikers anyway, I know, I know this is, I do it. I won't go to a regular church. Why? Because they stick their nose up at you. It's like, well, why are you here? You know, you're not in your Sunday suit. Again, it drives people away. I don't like hypocrites. I really don't. Especially the ones that start throwing out scripture to everybody. You know, they'll throw out a line, well, this and that. They don't read the whole thing in context, for one. I hate that. They don't give you the whole background. You know, it's like, let's pick and choose, okay? But they don't tell the whole story of what's going on. And I hate to tell you... The King James Bible, Protestant Bible, if you will. The Catholic Bible has more in there, but it, it isn't the whole story. Those were chosen by men. There is a lot more text out there, a lot more books than what you're throwing around at people. So don't even get me into the religion talk, but, you know, I had to because, you know, that really pissed me off. If you want to spread something, and I know this monologue is a little different, but it does piss me off. Uh, if you want to spread something, don't be a hypocrite, man. If your balls are going to get all freaking puckered because... I threw a joke out like that. This channel ain't like for you. Because one thing is, I'm pretty real, okay? I'll say some stupid stuff. Crap, I've spent the last month being called a racist. Which, hey, if speaking like that is what's going to get you labeled in this panty society, hey, so be it. I guess I am. <laughs> I'm not going to change my views on stuff. People know that I treat other people, I guess, the way I want to be treated. If you want to say because I said this or that, I'm racist, well, screw you. You know, go somewhere else is all I have to say. Uh, and I know I talk about different things other than biker news. You know, that's our main thing. I give a good selection of biker news. But I also like going into other world events. Then you'll get the, well, don't talk politics, just stick with biker news, you know. Really? You don't think people need to be educated? Especially when it comes to mainstream media. 
and all the slants and propaganda that they put out. I have invited people time after time. If you don't like my views, then come on the show and debate. That's where it usually ends right there because they know they better have the facts straight if they come on the show to debate me because I'm not an easy guy to debate. You know, we're going to go full bore jackhammer time when we debate. So you're going to have to be able to defend your position with me. That's what a debate is. So then you get other people, you know, complaining about the people I got on my wall. Well, this and that. Well, dude, screw you if you don't like it. Take your pecker pulling rub ass and go to another channel. For one, you probably don't know who the hell they are. Uh, and uh, I'm going to say here. You probably couldn't spit shine their shoes if you did. Just trying to be nice. Yeah, I'm in one of them moods today. <laughs> you go through the comments section and it's like... Why did you even take the time to freaking say anything, you schmucks? If you don't like the channel, hit the freaking unsubscribe. It's not going to hurt my feelings. And you don't need to announce your departure because nobody gives a shit about why you're leaving. But what do you guys think? It's so hypocritical, ain't it? And, and I bet the dude to take the comment down right away because he's going to be worried about being made fun of or something like that. But, that, you know, to get back to the one point why I do all kinds of sorts of news is because as that one piece I described, most people come to a lot of influencers for their thoughts. Like I said, I like Tim Pool. I like Joe Rogan. I go to them kind of guys, you know, because they, you know, Tim Pool has uh, about the same platform I do right here. He'll read the stories, go through, give his opinions, and it's real logical the way he does it. That's kind of what I do on this show. Put the articles up. Next thing you know, I'm giving my opinions. You can be either for or against. That's debate. But that's something we haven't learned how to do. So, that's my monologue today. If you don't like my jokes, I guess that's the, you know, conclusion out of this whole thing. Get your ass off the freaking platform, you don't like it. Go over there with other pecker pullers, man, and don't know what's up. <laughs> Let's get to some biker news, man. Okay, this first story, boy, does my freaking blood boil on this one. You know what? It is unbelievable, and you wonder why bikers carry freaking ball bearings in your pockets. If you don't, you should. News 6. Tulsa police call for charges after woman posts video bragging about road rage incident. Listen to this. Five o'clock after a video goes viral of a woman running into the back of a motorcyclist, Tulsa police say they will now ask for her to be charged with assault with a deadly weapon. Police say the woman posted the video herself in what they call a case of road rage. News on Six's Reagan Ledbetter has the story you'll see only on Six. Reagan? Well, Lori and Craig, police tell me they initially wrote the driver a traffic ticket and sent her on her way. Well, that all changed when they say she posted a video of the incident on Facebook bragging about it. Now they're asking for a felony charge against her. This video shows a woman driving right behind Patrick Devlin on his motorcycle. He says he'd yelled at her to get off her phone because she was swerving all over the road. Then she did this. When it hit me, I was in shock. That's why I was like, what? You know, that's why immediately I was like, call the police because I was freaked out. Devlin believes she hit him intentionally right after she'd already been all over the road. And she's looking down in her lap. So I'm like, get off the phone! Devlin says she yelled back, then rode his bumper until she knocked him off his bike. Police gave her a ticket for following too close, and Devlin thought it was best to just move on. 
until he woke up and saw the video she had posted. I honestly was completely astonished that somebody would post video of them saying the things that she said and then bragging that she should have run me over and she should have she'll do it again i talked with tulsa police after they watched the video they say it could have ended a lot worse and devlin Damn right is lucky he wasn't hurt it's a two-ton piece of equipment that can be used as a, as a weapon just like a gun knife baseball bat pipe or whatever if you use your vehicle intentionally to hurt someone or hurt property you're using it as a weapon. Obviously, she's not taking it very serious if she wouldn't be, she's bragging about it on Facebook. And understandably, there's, I, I understand there's a lot of people out there that are very upset by watching the video, and understandably so. Now, I messaged a driver, and she says it was just a fender bender, and she feels she's being harassed by people online, and she's done talking about it. Now, for police, yeah, go they'll to forward jail, the report bitch. to the district attorney's office, who will decide whether to file the assault charge, and I'll keep you updated on that. Live in Tulsa, Reagan Ledbetter, Oklahoma Zone, News on 6. My God, she thinks it was a fender bender, and she's done discussing it? If they don't charge her after this, something is wrong with the freaking country. You know what? Unfreaking believable. If you are over on the radio, get your butts over here, over on YouTube or Facebook, and watch this thing. Unbelievable, man. Carry some freaking ball bearings. They do a lot of good damage. There's other stuff out there that you can use, but you know what? That's why it is so dangerous on a motorcycle. You got to know what the hell you're doing cuz usually Rex ain't about the the one riding. It's the one, you know, the cagers around you that's going to cause something. And cell phones? Oh, do I hate that one when somebody's on a damn cell phone and they're driving and they're just talking away, not paying attention. Oh, those are the worst ones. Let me know what you think on this article. Okay, let's go! Up to the boys up north. Kilawana! Hells Angel Prospect Charge with Assault by Kim Bolin. Kim Bolin, she does the majority of the reporting on a lot of the biker stuff up there. Uh, if you notice, when I go up to the Canada stuff, She's the one throwing it. Uh, Jason Dennis Townsend, a former member of the Renegade Motorcycle Club in Prince George, faces two counts in connection with a domestic incident. A prospect with the Hells Angels has been charged. Okay, now I am confused right off the bat, Kim. Okay, he's a former member of the Renegades, but now you're saying a prospect with why did you even bring up the renegade motorcycle club then if he's a prospect for the angels he's a prospect with the angels and there was no need to talk about the other one just some criticism i'm saying <laughs> uh he has been uh, charged with common assault and assault by choking after a weekend domestic incident Court records show Jason Dennis Townsend, 43, was charged on August 8th with both counts related to an incident that took place a day earlier. He is next due in court on September 15th. Uh, the RCMP Media Relations Officer, Constable Salona Pear, said Monday that police were called to, quote, an alleged assault in progress at a resident in the 500 block of Yates Road. Frontline officers immediately attended the scene and found the male suspect had fled the residence prior to the police attendance. Officers spoke with the female victim who had been assaulted and suffering minor injuries. During the coast, or course of the investigation, it was later determined that the victim and suspect we're known to each other. He's probably bending her down, you know. You know, he didn't like the, what she did, and, you know, it happened, you know. She didn't blow the load right. I don't know what to tell you. Later that day, the male suspect turned himself in. Townsend is, here we go again. Townsend is a former member of the Renegades Motorcycle Club in Prince George, which operated as a support or puppet club 
to the Hells Angels before it disbanded after the murder of a leader and the arrest of several members. He was later accepted into the Hells Angels program. What? Okay, what's a program now? Hey, BD, can you explain what the program is with motorcycle clubs? Uh, you know, it, that one just came out of you know left field. And last uh, fall became a prospect, the final stage before becoming a full patch member of the Notorious Biker Club. Only full patch members can wear the three-piece death head patch on the back of their vests. Hmm. <laughs> Earlier, Townsend was sentenced in 2014 to two years in jail for a vicious attack on three people in Prince George. He was convicted of two counts of aggravated assault and one count of assault causing bodily harm for the assault on two men and a woman outside a local nightclub. Maybe he needs some, you know, anger management school. Mm -hmm. The entire incident was captured on video. Yes, video is everywhere, man. I don't know why people do stuff uh, anymore because it's all on video. Nobody takes the time, plan out the racket, and, you know, do their thing. No, they just get the freaking stuff caught on video. Uh, Townsend was punching a man in the face, kicking him after he fell to the ground, smashing his head on a brick wall. A woman who tried to stop him uh, was punched in the face and knocked out. See, that's one thing with women. They don't get it. Don't get it. A trained uh, woman does, but uh, most women don't. When something's going on, there's people duking it out. Don't jump in the middle of it. You're going to get hurt. That's good advice, by the way. <laughs> well, you're a snow in this bed. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, Townsend fled after the attacks and was arrested several days later. Uh, Townsend also had earlier convictions, uh, assault, drug trafficking, and firearms possession. The club was disbanded after the murder of one former president. Targeted investigations led to charges and convictions against several other members. That from up north, you got to work on this story, Kim. You really do, because there's no reason to bring that other stuff into this. You know, he was a Hells Angels prospect. You know, just saying, you know, from my point of view. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah. You know what? New York, man. New York, you got a schluck as a freaking governor, man. Uh, I have seen people complaining about what they're doing to businesses out on the East Coast, New Jersey, New York. Why do you guys keep voting for them? It's a serious question. Everybody's bitching and complaining about what's going on. But you guys vote for these people year after freaking year. It kind of gets old, don't you think? But anyway, uh, several other states, including New York, are uh, ordering uh, Sturgis bikers to quarantine when they return home. How do you make somebody quarantine? Okay, I'm one of the guys who don't want to catch this crap. I wear the mask, but that's my choice. How do you, uh, you know what, one thing that's pissing me off. You know, Wisconsin, Illinois, now, you know, if you go to either one, which I go to the one all the time, and you come back, you're supposed to quarantine. What the hell, really? How are you going to enforce that? And why do you bring up that stupid crap anyway? It's unreal. It's uh, it's not necessary, if you ask me. <laughs> I'm in one of them moods today. Uh, but Biker Dad, let's listen in. Most may need to quarantine when they return home from Sturgis. Yesterday, New York issued an advisory for anyone who travels to South Dakota, saying the state has significant community spread. Anyone who makes the trip from South Dakota to New York will be required to quarantine for two weeks. Connecticut, New Jersey, and Rhode Island also have travel advisories for South Dakota and for dozens of other states. You know, this is just, like I said, how are you going to enforce something like that? That's insane. You know, no, what it is, is they've been talking about Sturges for the last week now. The last week. And all it's been is CNN, MSNBC, all these other liberal leftist papers freaking out that there's a rally going on. It's the biggest one since the pandemic started. All they're doing is bashing on bikers. 
That's what they want to do. Now they're making it hard for them to come home. Unreal. Now, this is another one that they're going to be targeting. Laconia. You know if they hit Sturges, they're going to hit this one. Uh, this out of the LaconiaDailySun.com. Mayor insists the motorcycle week can be safe in the midst of uh, COVID. By Michael Morrison. Uh, Laconia. Mayor Andrew Hosmer is seeking to reassure people that holding Laconia Motorcycle Week now less than two weeks away will not put people's health at greater risk despite the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. One of the biggest headlines that's coming out of Sturges is tons of bikes, no masks to be found. Yes, that's their big thing. And boy, does their penises get hard now because, hey, this guy ain't wearing a mask. You know what? What happened in the very beginning when all you schlucks were telling everybody, well, masks don't work? Now all of a sudden, masks work. See how they lead around the people? They lead people around by the peckers to make you obedient. And that's what you're falling into. In remarks during Monday City Council meeting, Hosmer said city officials are in regular contact with state public health officials, the governor's office, and local medical experts as the city prepares to host the 97th rally, which before COVID drew tens of thousands of bikers a year to the lakes region. You know what's sad is everybody's saying, well, it used to be like this before COVID. No, we got to get back to normal life, man. We do. Businesses need to be open. You know, you got them schlucks out east. See, sometimes I really don't get how people out east think. I'm not trying to be a dick. You know, I'm from the Midwest. So we think a lot different than those on the east coast. And it's they took a gym owner's business license away because he refuses to comply with that kind of stuff what i have to say is is the government actually helping these businesses uh, out are they paying their bills i don't know so what do you expect them to do to make a living you guys are living it up on the taxpayers dollars you guys get all this pretty security guards, you get these big houses to live in, but you peons trying to make a living, you know, down the rung, you know, you're bad. Why you got a governor in New York who keeps on denying all the deaths in them nursing homes. And you people let them. That right there is disgusting. Uh... Promoters and city officials do not expect a turnout like this at the time. It will take place in name only. Police Chief Matt Canfield expect it will be no busier than this past 4th of July weekend. To underscore how this year's rally has been scaled back significantly, the mayor cited several activities and features typical of past years which have been scrapped. The city denied an application for a fireworks display and is not allowing outdoor concerts, vendors, or motorcycle parking down the center of Lakeside Avenue and Rears Beach. Why even go? I say skip it and freaking don't give them any money. That's just like Sturges. Them idiots make over a million dollars in freaking what, two weeks? Stop supporting them. They want the control. It just tells you right there. We denied this. We denied that. But you're giving them money. The city will not be participating in Motorcycle Week. We are still very cautious, he said. The mayor expected to reiterate those points when he and other city officials speak at news conference scheduled. Uh, it looked like it happened today. Uh, the news uh, conference will be carried out okay, but many residents believe that despite the scaling back, it is irresponsible to hold the event during a pandemic, which is caused by a virus uh, when spread when infected people are in close contact with others. Bikers going to show up where they want. That's what I can say to your local residents. And remember all the complaining you're doing when your property taxes go up and the rallies, it's not there anymore. 
Uh, Tuesday's Daily Sun contained about half of the responses the paper received to its question of the week, which asked what readers thought the decision to hold the motorcycle uh, week this year. There was not one person who responded who was in favor of it. Bull. You know what? You lie. Give me a break, man. <sighs> Report the news. Not your freaking propaganda you tell me not one person said they didn't want that rally you're freaking full of crap even an error on the poll would show that many said letting the rally proceed unnecessarily jeopardizes the significant progress that has been made in reducing the number of covid cases around the state as much as i hate to say it everybody's probably going to catch this Whatever's going on right now is just pure control. Yes, you can take, you know, you can take the precautions not to get it, but it is so widespread now, it's already broken out the gates. It, yeah, it's taught us about, you know, social distancing and washing hands and wearing masks. Hey, the flu might not be that bad this year like it was last year. But I really do think everybody's probably going to catch this stuff. The rushing to get a vaccine. I don't know about taking no vaccine if it ain't tested, man. You know, I, I am on seizure drugs. And if that stuff hasn't been around for more than five years tested, I ain't taking it. So you really think a vaccine that hasn't that's been rushed into service? No. And I think a lot of people think the same way. Uh, many said letting the rally proceed uh, unnecessarily jeopardizes the progress that has been made. Uh, some readers pointed to the behavior of many attending the Sturgis motorcycle rally now taking place in South Dakota, with thousands of riders floating the standard uh, COVID-19 precautions of wearing face masks and practicing social distancing. Many of those in Sturgis have been sporting uh, t-shirts with the message, Screw COVID, I went to Sturges. Oh, boy, is that attitude right there. They don't like the liberals, let me tell you. But anyway, what do you guys think? Are you going to go over to Laconia if you usually go? Uh, what do you think about how the, the citizens react to bikers now? Well, they're floating the safety protocols. Well, if you would listen, you know, they didn't want us wearing masks in the beginning. It was bad. Now it's good. Make up your damn minds is what I have to say. Uh, let's go to another story. And I talked about this the other day. Off highway and dual purpose motorcycle sales are soaring right now. And I, I told you about that one, man. You know, these things are freaking rocketing, man. And that's why Harley Davidson, they haven't came out with thirds yet. And that's a big thing they need to do if they're going to try to get some sales in there and get, try to get these kids in there riding again. And you know what? I got to admit, I'd love to have an off-road one, man. But I'd probably get an African twin from Honda or something like that. I wouldn't go with a Harley, man. My fat boy's the last one I'll ever own with that Harley. And I know it pisses people off. But, you know, that's just the way I feel, how they're, uh, you know, treating the core base. Irving, California. And this is from Cycle News, man. If you like bike reviews, and this is one of the main places I'll come to get news on what's going on with manufacturers and stuff. Very good site. Uh, Off-highway motorcycle sales rocketed 50.3%. And just think, Harley doesn't have its out yet. And it's skyrocketing by 50%. And they're sitting there throttling their freaking peckers. In the first half of the year, compared with the same period last year, while dual-purpose motorcycle sales jumped 20% in the same time frame, according to the Motorcycle Industry Council Retail Sales Reporting System, quote, Riding dirt and trail bikes has always been one of the best ways to spend time with family and friends, uh, said Eric Pritchard, uh, President and CEO of the Motorcycle Industry Council. Now, with the pandemic, it has amplified what's positive about getting out on motorcycles. You can get out of the house, have fun with your loved ones, and still maintain social distancing. 
Off-highway motorcycles include dirt bikes, trail bikes, competition motorcycles, and other motorized two-wheelers that cannot be used on public roads. Dual-purpose motorcycles are street legal and are also designed to be used off-road trails. BMW has a nice one, too. On highway, motorcycle sales dipped 9.6%, while scooter sales rose 4.6%. Or four percent. That kind of shows you uh, a trend there. If I'm not mistaken, uh, you're getting a lot more freaking kids in this thing, man. Because you got them going to the off roads. Sales are up on that. The highway, you know, they're down. So that's our older age. And scooter sales rose four percent. College kids. So here's a pattern that Harley Davidson might want to look at. Combined with uh, off-highway and dual, this puts total motorcycle sales in the first half of the year up 6.4%. But, I hate to be picking on Harley, they lost $92 million. So, sales are up. Everybody else is seeing freaking I read numbers from Honda and uh, Triumph and all that. Their sales are up while Harley's is down. And here's a freaking trend right here. That should worry Harley Davidson because their main bikes are freaking uh, highway ones. And no sales dipped 9.6%, while scooter sales rose 4 and off road rose as well. So there's your trend of where those kids are going to the off roads, and you got scooters for college kids and stuff. Or I see them riding them around over here. Uh, the MIC recently launched a commuter distance campaign to encourage people to consider motorized two- and three-wheelers. Uh, there are many benefits to motorcycles and scooters. In normal times, studies have shown that they help alleviate congestion. During this pandemic, being on a motorcycle means being able to avoid crowds and lessen the chance of spreading and picking up uh, germs. I don't know how that one works. You know, you're sitting in a freaking truck or something and there's nobody there. And many riders say it adds fun to a normally mundane commute. Uh, commuter distancing social media posts are a reminder of these. Uh, it's just a first step, and many in the power sports industry are waiting to help riders to explore their options. So, we discovered that pattern, man. Wow. 50.3% off uh, highway motorcycle sales. Unreal. Now let's go to Corey uh, Graff's Wall of Shame, baby. And he's got one. Elmore Police Department. She call him with FUD. Officer arrested by FBI on charges of receiving distribution of, guess what? Child pornography. <laughs> My God, you sick freaks. Elmore Police Officer Samuel Kerp. You are now in the wall of shame for being a freaking schluck of freaking uh, less than a human being. Oh, wait a second. That ain't Christian to me. I'm going to get that one next. You watch in the comments. Was taken into custody August 11 uh, following a tip submitted to the FBI regarding his involvement in distributing child pornography. Uh, the FBI has arrested Elmore uh, police officer, okay, a press release sent by the FBI confirmed the arrest and investigation according to the authorities. An online tip was sent to the Ohio Internet Crimes Against Children's Task Force and forwarded to the Oregon Police Department. Uh, they passed the tip along to the FBI's uh, Child Exploitation and Human Trafficking Task Force. The FBI then opened an investigation into reports that a person has been distributing 26 illicit images or videos of ch or child sexual abuse through a social media messenger app. That just shows you how freaking stupid cops are. Uh, the FBI traced the IP addresses used to buy the sender back to Samuel Kerp, it was confirmed by Elmer Police that Kerp was employed and attending work during the time these messages were sent. Kerp has served as an officer in Elmore since 2017. Uh, yeah, the IP addresses, it's real funny. You know, you get people sending the emails and stuff to us, and it's like, dude, it's easy to track where the freaking you are with your IP. 
Uh, they don't get how to get around that stuff. Anyway, two federal search warrants were executed by the FBI, one in Oregon where the child pornography had been sent or received, and one at his most recent address in Elmer. Kerp was taken into custody by the Toledo branch of the FBI's Child Exploitation and Human Trafficking Task Force. You scumbag are in the wall of shame. Now for my Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Okay, we're back with my final thoughts, but before we begin, uh, I've been having a lot of people ask me uh, how they can don donate to the show, especially since we got a new radio station coming up, and it's going to be uh, pretty tough to handle for the first few months, but uh, we'll keep it going. Uh, you can donate by uh, PayPal. I got the link in the description box of all the show notes. Or you can do it during Super Chat, like right now, you know, as you're watching the video on YouTube. Or you can send a check or money order to Insane Throttle, P.O. Box 38, Rockton, Illinois, 61072. Also, I've been getting asked a lot about Instagram. I'm going to start doing a little more uh, Instagram TV type of deals. You know, I do those short little minute ones to give them my thoughts on whatever's going on uh, that day or situation I've been in or, you know, doing moto vlogs. And I think that's what I'm going to start doing is putting, you know, maybe five minute videos up there just discussing whatever. So make sure you go over to I, uh, Instagram and uh, follow us over there. Uh, it's been pretty cool seeing those numbers go up, even though I don't know how to use it half the time and check messages, but I'm learning. And then our Twitter feed uh, gives you everything going on at HarleyLiberty.com. My final thoughts. <laughs> you wonder why bikers don't like citizens. True bikers, by the way. I'm not talking about these rubs. You know, you know I got to stop banging on rubs. I really do because some are pretty cool. Uh, I just don't like they don't ride that much. Uh, but going and posting a video on Facebook, laughing about hitting a motorcycle... You're lucky the guy didn't die. The way he was hit from the rear end, and that's one of the uh, the situations I really hate is when you're at a stoplight and you see that car coming. It's like, dude, you're going to freaking stop already? And you get ready to hit that throttle in case he don't. You know, hit, getting hit by behind, man. Oh, But then to have a citizen say, well, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Well, hopefully they do charge you with that felony because it's all right there in video and you posted it on your Facebook, man. Don't you, you know, a lot of people are retarded. They don't get it. You know, when you post everything on social media, the cops know what the hell's going on because all they do is sit back in their office and you're letting, you know, you're doing the work for them. That's why I laugh when you see these kids holding the, you know, the handful of cash and uh, the dope with them. It's like, dude, you stupid idiots. Who taught you anything? They're going to see that, take a picture. Now it's used against you in the case. Wise up, man. But I think really uh, the eBay campaign, motorcycles are everywhere, start looking twice and stuff. You know, it's a good campaign, but something like that ain't going to work on an idiot like this. Uh, I think, you know, actually there should be uh, tougher, and I'm not one for, you know, throwing laws around, but I think there should be a lot harsher penalty for those caught on cell phones. I really do. Uh, here in Illinois, I think it goes up to $1,000. I say take away the license for a year and see how they like that. That's just my, you know, I don't, you know what, anything that can put a biker in jeopardy, that's messed up. It really is. Uh, and for this video to go out like they did, that is, sh they're slucks. <laughs> uh, the Canadian story, uh, what can I say? Kim, you disappoint me in your reporting on this one, man. There was no reason. <laughs> yeah, I just went and picked up another one today. Uh, this one is uh, uh, Black Gorilla or something like that. Good stuff. Uh, anyway, there was no reason to bring up his former motorcycle club he was a prospect for the hell's angel so why put that out there other than you know 
get yourself more headlines. That's one thing that people don't like about the media. Nope, they don't. And uh, Harley Davidson, boy, you better get on track because after I seen them trends, you know exactly what bike these younger generations are going for. We used to call them Enduros, and at first they were funny and stuff because you're growing up going through Harleys and stuff. You look at that and like laugh. But these new off road and on road bikes are freaking beautiful, man. Uh, Adam Sandoval, he just did the American Trail and he had a badass one, and that looked fun as hell right there. <laughs> it really did. And I was like, man, I should get one of them. That'd be fun. Uh, you know, just to zip around on, you know, locally and stuff, do trails. But if that's what it's showing, the trends are up by 50%. And then you got scooters up. There's what's going on right there. They're not buying cruiser motorcycles. They want. They don't want the big heavy ones. They don't want baggers or any of that stuff. They want the lighter CC bikes that fit their lifestyle. Come on, you know, these kids, they're not getting dressed up in leathers anymore. They're not, you know, wanting to be the big bad biker. You know, most of them are motorcycle enthusiasts, which is fine. And I'm not bashing on motorcycle enthusiasts. Because, quite frankly, we all we're, we all should be considered that. Now, some of us take it to the, the different level. But me, I enjoy all two wheels, man. I'm not a Harley only, only guy. Even though I've owned a, a lot of them doesn't mean, hey, that's where I like going. You know, people laughed the other day when I said, well, actually, my Boulevard is my favorite bike out of the two. And they're like, well, you know, that Jap, they, do we get off of it? <laughs> really? The Boulevard rides better, and it's got more power to the rear than the Fab Boy does. And it don't give me a freaking headache with all the shaking around. So... You know, I'm not diehard. You know, I love all freaking motorcycles, man. I love BMWs. Triumph's one of my favorite bikes. Uh, then, of course, the Zuki brands. Honda's got a lot of great stuff out there. Uh, but if you're looking for the sales trends, Harley, I think you found it, man. <laughs> I think you found it. So you better get your off-roader out there before the African twin just takes up the whole market share, that BMW and all that. I don't know if Triumph has one. I got to look at the Triumph lineup to see if they got one of those. Uh, as far as Corey Graff's wall of shame, can you believe this, man? What is wrong with people? Seriously, I don't get it. You know, I'm a father, a granddad. And it, it, it just makes my skin crawl that people think that way towards kids. I don't know what it is. Is it a power trip to you freaks? You crawls, man. What is it? Tell me. What is it that you've got to do that kind of disgusting stuff? And people wonder why I say go medieval on them. Don't, you know what? Give them the trial because that's the way we live in America. Innocent before proven guilty. If you're convicted... Town Square, baby, medieval time at that point. Because no child deserves to go through that kind of crap. None. Also, I just seen uh, come up uh, across my screen, very interesting, and I think I'll cover it in tomorrow's segment. Uh, a military uh, helicopter was shot at in Virginia. Yeah, getting real good right now, huh? Anyway, uh... Let me know what you uh, think about the show. Make sure you visit us on all your platforms. We got them all, man. YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, the whole nine yards. With that, I'll talk to you guys later, man. You guys have a good one. I'm outie. I said goodbye, vamoose, adios, ciao, so long, get your hat jacked. So you want to know how to support the show, go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now rock on don't forget to go over to harleyliberty.com get all your motorcycle club news what's happening in the scene we have a new article or articles every single day over at harleyliberty.com and don't forget the sister site bikerlifestylemagazine.com if you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycle and news motorcycle rallies and bikers helping the community 
motorcycle club editorials and more and don't forget to visit us on facebook get involved in the conversation watch videos done a motorcycle madhouse and more also we have instagram yes instagram we have material that is not seen anywhere else so don't forget get on our platforms check out your daily biker news rock on Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all about baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at BaggerSyndicateCycles.com. The show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms, including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!